Security Bytes is a weekly half-hour show where we begin by briefly covering recent cybersecurity news such as global threats, cybercrime, and major attacks. Then we're joined by an industry cybersecurity expert to discuss today's pressing business and technical challenges of security. Security Bytes is hosted by me, Jim Tiller, and powered by Nash Squared. You can find us on all major streaming platforms, such as Spotify, Apple, Google, and others. Please subscribe or follow so you don't miss a single power-packed episode. Let's get started. (laughs) There's no way you're touching our savings. It is a great idea, but why don't you try and do it? I've got faith in you. You know, you've got a bit of spare time. Have a, have a go, you know, take on a project. And, that, and that's what I did and, and just found something that I actually loved. And yeah, over the space of about 10 months, managed to make the first version of this app, which, um, yeah, has, has, has gone on to help lots of people. Do you struggle to wake up in the morning? As we draw into winter and the mornings get darker, we all have that slightly groggy feeling if we're waking up early in the morning. Well, today's guest maybe has a solution for that. Sleepwave is a smart alarm clock, one that wakes you up at the optimal moment. This is Tech Talks, your weekly technology podcast with myself, David Savage, powered by the Harvey Nash Group, where we bring you the thoughts and insights from leaders across the sector. Buongiorno, Amber. You've probably got no idea why I've said that to you, but uh, how are you? I'm very well. Yeah, I'm currently looking over um, the lovely sort of London skyline. So yeah, I'm in the sunshine. So yeah, very well. Thank you, Dave. How are you? Oh, then I feel like Buongiorno is is perfectly adequate, given that you're looking out over a sunny landscape. Um, I hope you recognise that's Italian. You're quite well travelled. Um, no, I didn't actually. Um, <laughs> I, I should have said ciao. Uh, yeah, I I um I don't know. I was going to say French. So um. And I'm really glad I didn't comment and say something about France because obviously I would have been completely (laughs) way off. Um, So, yeah, quite pleased about that. No, for some reason, we don't know why. And and I have to admit, right, podcast listeners, um, here's a little bit of behind the scenes. Uh, When you get your statistics through from your podcast host, sometimes you look at it and go, really? Other servers may be playing up, but apparently 7,000 people in Florence listened to the podcast last week. Really? Apparently so. Wow, that's crazy. So, hence the Italian greeting, because if you're in Florence and you're listening this week, well, thank you for <laughs> stopping by and streaming our podcast. Oh, wow, that's, yeah, that's very bizarre. I mean, it's great, but, um, well, yeah, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have guessed that if you were to say anywhere in the world. I would never have said that. But um, Florence, no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're going to International Day. This is great. Uh, you, have you been to Florence? I haven't. No, I mean, it looks very, very nice, but no, I haven't. I haven't been. Have you? I, I, I've been once. I've been once for a day. It's very warm. It's very busy. There's obviously a lot of very beautiful buildings. Um, actually, someone who used to co-host this podcast while she was at uh, Nash Squared, uh, Courtney, um, she's there right now or was been, ah. uh, has been, sorry, looking at her Instagram stories. Yeah, I've seen actually. Oh, okay. I didn't realize she was in Florence. It's, maybe, yeah. maybe she's one of the 7,000. Well, there we go. Yeah, maybe it is. But oh well, if you're listening, Courtney, thanks for for drumming up an audience whilst in Florence. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it was just uh, one of those bizarre moments Uh, looking at the statistics. Anyway, um, yes, welcome to today's show. Jules is our primary guest. We've got a couple of things to discuss. We're going to be talking about sleep, um, but we'll hand over to our interview and then afterwards uh, we will um, have a quick chat about it. So I'm chatting to Jules Goldberg. Jules, you're the the uh, CEO and CTO founder of Sleepwave, correct? That is a lot of letters uh, to describe me. Um, I prefer something simpler. The word I really prefer is inventor. This morning I was chatting to someone who literally just gave themselves the title chief. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 do, I, I do struggle with these chief executive of when you're, you know, yeah, no, but I, I, founder is good. Inventor is good. Um, we'll go. We'll but... go with inventor. We'll go with inventor. <laughs> yes. um, so, so before we get into anything else, can you tell us a little bit about Sleepwave? So, Sleepwave is a, a new app that we've created out of this amazing technology that we've developed over the last few years. Um, 
before we get to Sleepwave, I think it's important to hear a bit about the first app which um, I developed, which was Snorlab, which is a, an app for recording and tracking snoring. Um, so this is an app that I, I, I first started working on in 2012 and um, you know, has, has gone on to help millions of people uh, with snoring problems. And uh, back in 2015, we were looking at ways of improving our technology so we could get a better understanding of, of, of sleep and all the parameters and the things that are going on when people sleep. And uh, we read about new technology, which was sonar, uh, essentially detecting movements and breathing using high frequency inaudible sounds. Uh, we started looking at this technology uh, to develop ourselves in, in 2019 and basically made some real breakthroughs uh, in the technology, uh, which, and, and, and those uh, have been developed in the context of a new app, uh, which is Sleepwave, which uh, we're just in the process of kind of soft launching. It's just getting out to the public now. And uh, yeah, it's a very exciting app. So where where did the idea for this come from? Because your background is a um, Cambridge graduate with with an economics yes. uh, degree. It's not it's not. I mean, economics, yeah, sure, mathematics. I suppose numbers can lend itself to invention and technology, but not necessarily sleep therapy, right? No, 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 definitely not. And and economics was not one of my. Uh, when I was at school, I loved physics and maths, and these were really my joys, in particular physics. And, uh, but then I had a great economics teacher at A-level and somehow made the decision to study economics at university, which was a decision I regretted almost immediately, um, but uh, kind of oh, stuck with it and, and was working uh, for a while in trying to make economic predictions, which were <laughs> not, not, not especially good. And, and uh yeah, I wasn't particularly fulfilled in, 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 in that. And uh, yeah, I had the idea for, for Snore Lab when my wife told me that I was snoring. And uh, this was very early in the App Store. And, uh, you know, remarkably, there wasn't really a, a good quality app for doing what I wanted to do, which was to record my snoring, measure it, and also investigate ways to reduce it. Um, and I can imagine this, this product, this app, and um, I actually went to my wife and said, I've got this great idea for an app to record snoring. Uh, let's take our, our, our savings for, for the house deposit. Let's get a developer to build this app for us. And she said, there is no way you're touching our savings. It is a great idea, but um, why don't you try and do it? I've got faith in you. You know, you've got a bit of spare time. Have a, have a go, you know, take on a project. And, and that's what I did and, and just found something that I actually loved. And yeah, over the space of about 10 months, managed to make the first version of this app, which, um, yeah, has, has, has gone on to help lots of people. So the current iteration, Sleepwave, you, it's obviously this new technology um, yeah. that allows you to, to um, measure movement. How does it do it? How does it differ from the Garmin that I'm wearing on my watch right on my on my wrist right now. Okay, so um, the big difference is you don't need to wear anything um, because it works from your phone. Uh, the technology has some similarities to animals like dolphins who can make sounds and listen to the reflections of the sounds to essentially see using sound. Um, and so we've taken the same principle and done it on a phone. And uh, what we actually do is play a very quiet, high-frequency sound wave, which is above our hearing frequency, uh, but uh, the phone can, can still hear it. And, 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 uh, and actually, when we move, we reflect sound, and we develop ways to analyze reflections of the sound to infer movement. And uh, this works with incredible detail. Um, and we actually filed, uh, made some patent filings on, on our, our findings. And yeah, and, and so this technology is really excellent for sleep tracking because you can just put your phone next to your bed. You don't need to wear any device. And, you know, from a side table, 
the, the, the app is able to detect your movements and even detect your breathing with quite incredible accuracy, uh, leading to you know, very accurate estimates of sleep depth, sleep phases, and also can power a better, smarter alarm clock. Just a very, and this could be, this could be a really stupid question, but how does it know the difference between your movement or your partner's movement or maybe a cat jumping on you in the middle of the night? And okay, I mean, that, that, that's a, a very good question. And um, yeah, the, the technology does have a limited range, which is actually very good in this context. Um, so yeah, if there is, you know, it will get a much stronger and clearer motion signal for the person who is closer to the phone. And so, yeah, we're seeing actually a great signal differentiation between two people in a bed with a phone either side of a bed. So it actually works very, very well in that context. As for a cat jumping on you, um, that probably would trigger a motion spike. But then probably you will move anyway if the cat jumps on you. So it's debatable if it's you or the cat. So we'll move on to the alarm clock in a moment aspect of it, because I think that's really interesting. But phases of sleep. My Garmin tells me phases of sleep. It's not very accurate. I know it's not. I said before we hit record that I will be sat on the sofa watching Netflix in a very vegetative state and it thinks I'm asleep. Uh, and I'll look at well, it probably getting that. some restorative effects. Well, I suppose. I suppose. Yeah, that's true. Um, says something about the my, my lifestyle in the evenings. Um, but I always look at it and I go, well, that's that's nice. And it kind of ends there. And I don't know what to do with that. I mean, what what does knowing the various different stages of a sleep cycle really mean to, to you when you kind of wake up and look at it and move on with your day? Um, it, it can be very, very interesting, certainly when it does go, go towards being more accurate. I mean, when we started seeing, we can actually see uh, and estimate REM dreaming and when, when you were dreaming. It is actually very, very interesting. But saying that, I actually don't think it is the most important aspect of the app. Um, I think the, the aspects of, of the smart alarm have a much bigger practical application, which we can talk about next. Saying that, though, if you do have sleep problems, if you are waking up tired in the day, uh, an app like Sleepwave can give you a great insight into what is going on in the night. It can help explain you know, why you're tired or see that you're not getting enough sleep or understand those patterns, see things that affect it. And... As is the case with Snorlab, you know, understanding something is the best way to 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 realize and, 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 and make improvements. So, you know, in your case, maybe you don't have a sleep problem, but other people will. Um, and this can help shed light on that. Um, is, is saying that data all of that, that sorry, you know, just to jump yeah. in, but is that data that you can take then to a a therapist or, or a GP if you're having issues? I mean, have you thought about integrating with other services or is it just something that someone can take and go look, this is, this is the data that I'm getting from this app. What, what do you make of it? Well, I think, I think the sleep phase stuff alone is, 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 wouldn't be of, of that for um, a doctor, for example. But where it does get very, very interesting is in the breathing side where this technology has a lot of application. I mean, we, do, we have approached this from also trying to understand more about sleep health. And that side of a project is very, very exciting. I won't talk too much about it now because there's... There's stuff, there's, there's other things, but um, yeah, the, 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 there is huge application for um, this kind of technology to help people in a clinical medical setting. For example, you know, you, if you speak to, to sleep doctors, um, you know, if somebody comes into them with a sleep complaint, at, currently all they can do is give them this equipment which they have to strap to their chests and wear things to their nose and it's very hard for people to use um, well, and also it doesn't necessarily give them a representative view of their sleep because you're not, how can you sleep naturally when you've got all this equipment strapped on? And, and also for kids, you might have kids with um, sleeping issues. And again, this, this equipment is not suitable to, for them. And there is a growing um, understanding in the medical space that apps can serve a really important purpose, uh, use here, if they can get a good data accuracy because apps are immediately accessible and also they can help build up a, a picture of your sleep over longer time periods. I mean, you can um, see your sleep over weeks and that can be, give a much more kind of useful picture actually to a doctor. And, but the caveat is if the underlying data is good 
And I think what Sleepwave can do is transform the, the, that area because the underlying data is very, very good. So look, unfortunately, I've noticed that the evenings are getting slightly shorter and the mornings are getting slightly darker. And obviously, as we head slowly into autumn, I mean, it's not quite there yet, but we will soon. Um, it gets a little bit harder to wake up in the mornings. Mm. You were talking about this acting as, a, as as an alarm clock. Yeah. How does it act as an alarm clock? Yeah, yeah. So this is a really kind of a big, big area and something which has been very overlooked uh, in the health space in general. I mean, there are loads of apps out there which will claim to help you fall asleep, but relatively few which are focused on the quality of our wake up. Um, so many people wake up in the morning with a fixed time alarm. You set it to go off at seven o'clock and it will sound at seven o'clock whether or not that is a good moment for you to wake up. Um, in fact, sleep is not a constant state. Our brain and our body cycles through periods of being more alert and, and, and less alert. And essentially, when we move, or if you roll over in bed, we are naturally more awake than if we are lying still. And by linking the alarm clock to your body movements, essentially, we can wake you up when you are already waking up. And so by sounding the alarm when you move, you just have a much easier, better waking up experience. And this can really, you know, help with those feelings of grogginess, which a lot of people get when they're alarm after their alarm goes up. They, 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 the alarm goes at a bad time. They snooze it. They take another 10 minutes. Um, they're tired. And, and that, that sleep inertia, it's called, can really, you know, take... A long time to get over. And the difference this technology can make to your wake up is really quite remarkable. And, you know, we just have a feedback that people love it. And it really, really works. And it's just a wonderful, practical, um, you know, a real tangible benefit for people. So how do you see this? How do you see this, this, this uh, new um, technology helping i mean uh, what 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 kind of what plans have you got for for the app now that it's kind of out there and people can put it next to their bed what, what's the what's the plans for the business yeah so um we, we're developing i mean we you know our aspirations are really to be amongst the, the the biggest sleep tracking apps in the world i mean that's a um you know i certainly think our technology is the best and i am um, yeah i would just love to for this to get out to, to lots of people and they, they can experience the benefits of it. I mean, you know, you, you do, you create apps because you want to, to help people and have a positive impact. And so we want this to, to spread and, and people to talk about it and to love it. And to help it spread, we're actually focusing on, uh, you know, we're actually going to be, we're going to be having a very generous kind of free offerings, um, over this launch phase. So we're just launching Android. It's actually going live tomorrow. And for anyone who kind of downloads it in August, it's going to be completely free until the end of the year. Um, we just really want our apps to be accessible and not overly expensive um, so that they can you know, really go out and benefit the most number of people. Well, on that note, then, I will, I will go to the uh, Play Store tomorrow I will put my phone next to the bed. And by the time this podcast goes out, because we always have a bit of a chit chat with with my co-hosts, we we will trial it and we will we will see what it tells us. And the nice thing is, I'll be able to measure it against the Garmin. You can do, <laughs> and I'm sure that it will give much better data. As I say, I know the Garmin is often wrong. That's not why I wear the Garmin. I wear the Garmin for the fact it's got great GPS running. Um, so so yeah, it'd be really interesting to see what those results are. I I fear that my sleep is not wonderful. Hmm. Well, um, you'll see tomorrow. <laughs> uh, look, it's been a pleasure to speak to speak with you. Um, I'm assuming it's just Sleepwave on both iOS and Android by the time this goes out? Yes, exactly. Sleepwave and also Snore Lab, which is uh, another uh, fantastic app for the snorers out there. Absolutely. Yeah. Did you manage to fix your snoring? I mean, I, I, have, I have had an elbow in my ribs in the middle of the night on several occasions so uh yeah but there's lots of different causes of snoring and mine unfortunately is one of the trickier ones to fix it's really to do right. with uh, between my nose and my mouth and uh yeah there are things which i've discovered can really help it but the truth is it still does happen sometimes and i tell my wife wife you know what i still need to test my app and uh and also at least i've made a great business out of it 
absolutely. Uh, her, her suggestion of uh, trying yourself um, was certainly a good one. Yes. Look, thank you very much for your time, Jules, and, and I hope it goes well with the launch. Thank you very much. Okay, Amber, do you struggle to wake up in the morning? I I do. And you obviously in this interview as well, you touched upon like when it starts to get darker and it's a bit more, you know, obviously gets to winter. Um, that's when I really, really struggle. Like when it's nice and sunny outside, it's a nice fresh day. I can kind of jump out of bed. And I'm quite sprightly. But yeah, when it's winter, I, I do struggle. And I have to say, I am a snoozer. Like my alarm will go off. I still got relative, relatively early, but my alarm, yeah, it snoozes about sort of three, four times before I actually kind of say to myself, right, come on, you need to get out of bed now. See, I wake up, normally I wake up quite easily and not too groggy. The only thing that I have that is not a smart alarm in my house is my cat, who will <laughs> wake me up at whatever time she thinks she needs feeding. So I did try a sleep wave last night and it gave me some interesting stats around my sleep, um, which told me that um, I, I got some, some decent sleep from about 11.30 for about five and a half hours before my cat woke me up, before the smart alarm could do its work. But I did fall back to sleep afterwards and woke up at about eight o'clock this morning, actually, feeling pretty refreshed, which, okay. was, which was good. Um, but unfortunately, I wasn't woken up by the smart alarm, so I'm going to have to have another go at it. But um, it is incredible the difference that it makes, isn't it? Kind of how you're woken up. Yeah, it's um, it's really strange as well because I I have had this conversation with a couple of guys in the office and basically said that there are these kind of sleep cycles and yeah. if it obviously gets broken, that's when you're like you said you're not really sort of set for the day or you're it's been like interrupted, hasn't it? So I've said this before and people have thought I've been absolutely crazy. Um, so well, I, who's who's disagreed? That is that is well, I thought that sleep cycles were fairly kind of basically accepted. Well, that's exactly what I thought. Actually, one of the people is um, is a quiche. So when he's next on the podcast, we can call him out for that because oh, he thought it's an absolute uh, load of garbage. <laughs> yeah, I know. What an idiot. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I mean, I think it's a, a great idea. It kind of eases you into the day a little bit better, doesn't it? Um, and do you know what? I've never seen anything like this. Like I've seen, obviously, um, like you said, your, your Garmin and a lot of the kind of the, the fitness watches obviously record your sort of sleep and mm. give you that data as to sort of how you're sleeping, what patterns, you know, when you're fidgeting in the night, you know, those sorts of things. Um, but I've never seen anything do this this kind of sleep and, and ease you into the day, this type of alarm. I think that's really, really unique, actually. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I downloaded it. Obviously, you sort of gave me a shout yesterday and suggested to download it ahead of obviously us recording today, um, which I did. Um, but I was just telling you, I obviously put my phone on Do Not Disturb um, at night, which I usually do, which obviously then meant I didn't get woken up by the sleep alarm, which is not my brightest move. So I'll have to give it another go today. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm very sort of open minded. I think it's a great idea. So I'm intrigued to sort of see how I feel for being woken up rather than that horrible iPhone alarm, which usually sort of gets me. Yeah. yeah, just send sort of shivers down my spine if I hear it any other time of the day. Well, why don't why don't you try it tonight and then we'll post on socials and we'll see whether you avoid needing to use the snooze because you wake up more easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, okay, I will, I will do. I mean, on that point about Garmin, I love the fact that he talks about being an inventor because he's had to patent this technology and it is different. Like, I, I think the point around the underlying data being better and therefore it being of use to to medical professionals is a really important one because i have mm. no confidence in the garmin data i mentioned it in the interview i know it's wrong the garmin is a brilliant uh smart for what it's designed for which is running mm. it is not brilliant at, at tracking my sleep i know that it's wrong whereas the sleep wave data i looked at it and i thought that does look more on point actually with my experience i know that those are about the times that i fell asleep properly and and I love the fact that it's using technology and that you don't need to wear anything because it is, you know, I wear my watch, but my wife doesn't like wearing a watch at night. So I, I know that there are some people that don't like having to think about putting something on and, and it might be uncomfortable or unnatural and you can just lie there with it next to you. Yeah, that that was what I also found was really clever about it, actually, because um, I know when you're sort of setting it up, there's obviously you have to kind of pull the phone away from you and then draw it in closer again. Um and then he said something about obviously like dolphins and the sounds and the signals. Um, so, I mean, the actual kind of data and the, the sort of, what you know, the thought that's gone into it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, it all sounds, you know, incredibly clever. Um, and like you said, I mean, I'm the same. I don't have a Garmin, but I do have a, um, a Fitbit. And it, again, it's so inaccurate that this seems to be something that's kind of completely tailored towards 
um, you know, we're going to actually really sort of hone in on this data, give you loads and loads of stats. I thought that's what I actually found quite impressive about it is that it didn't just say you've slept for this long and mm-hmm. you maybe woke up at this time. There was like a at the bottom of the page, there was like six, seven different um, sort of points of data saying, I can't remember all of them off the top of my head, but there was so much there rather than just kind of the standard stuff that you would get. Um, yeah. so it really sort of delved in really really deep and it's like you said you can take that to kind of a, a medical professional or if he does integrate it with other apps or um, sort of partners up with with other things I'm sure it will be incredibly sort of useful to um, you know to help people as you said that's kind of his main focus yeah yeah absolutely and and I love that it's born out of of, of, an, of his own problems and that it's something that he's obviously very passionate about. I love mm. the fact that his wife was like, don't touch your savings. Uh, oh, yeah. And go away. <laughs> 10 months, you know, it took him 10 months to make the first version of this. But that just shows that it's something that he really is passionate about. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, and I thought that, that was a, another part of the interview that kind of stood out to me. I was like, everybody needs that that person in their life, don't they? Just be super open-minded and be like, nope, go and learn it for yourself. Um, but I think a big part of that, as you said, was probably she was like, nope, don't touch our our deposit savings. But um, I mean, yeah, you, you can sort of see from the app, it's it's very, um, you know, like I said, very detailed. It's very um, like thought out. It's quite, you know, meticulous. There's obviously a lot of time and effort and energy gone into it. And the fact that he's had to you know, be an inventor and go off and learn this for himself is probably why, you know, he is so passionate about it because obviously he's not just, um, you know, co-founder or, you know, CEO, all those titles you touched upon at the start. He obviously has actually gone away, learned this craft and then, you know, sort of channeled that into sort of developing something that's, um, yeah, that, you know, he can be incredibly proud of now. Exactly, exactly. Well, look, Jules, thank you for being our guest. We're going to take... A slight, uh, well, we're going to make a slight change of direction in our conversation because it's Book Lovers Day. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. I didn't Would know. Would you that. describe yourself as a book lover? Um, I'm a bookshelf lover. Um, I've got a bookshelf <laughs> full of books, um, many of which I have started but not finished. Um, but yeah, I like a good book. Like if I'm sat out in the sunshine, um, I'm not really one to play on my phone when I'm sort of like, you know. I don't know, away or traveling or just, yeah, just in the sun. So I would, yeah, I, I do like a good book. Um, well, I'm just going to play a quick four minute section of, of a few people that we've had on the podcast previously who have become authors, who've written business books uh, and talk about that. Uh, and there's three books there, uh, which will have uh, links in the show notes for you to check out if you want to. But just hold the thought on books for a moment. We'll play this and Amber, I'll come straight back to you. And now author. Mm-hmm. And what is the book? It's called Unprepared to Entrepreneur. Yeah. And it's the method to the entrepreneurial madness. It's an honest guide to how you can start your business without going to business school or spending a lot of money or having the networks, um, which most of us don't have. And it was released about two, three weeks ago? Yeah, absolutely. Um, October the 3rd in the UK and 23rd of October in the US and Canada. Yeah. And... This is a hardback copy, mm-hmm. so obviously in bookshops and, and the like, but mm-hmm. it's doing pretty well on Amazon. Yeah, it, it ended up being like number one hottest released or bestseller in entrepreneurship and business finance and law and small business, which is awesome um, because you, you kind of don't expect that. And it just means that, you know, more and more people are going into the entrepreneurial lifestyle. Like one in four of us want to start our own business. One in three of us already have a side hustle. Yep. So it's how do we commercialize that all and build build our passion project and in, in essence what happened was i ended up asking them to extend the deadline three times and it took me a year uh to, to write the book and i think with running a business um it, it was definitely challenging and it, it did mean you know giving up on a lot of social time i don't think my partner was extremely happy with me during that one year um, and <laughs> i was definitely slacking at, at home and um, in terms of tips i guess it's like many things it's it's discipline and focus um and i think once i realized a lot of the things i was doing was just a form of procrastination um you know it's like no i need to read a few more books to research i need to speak to a few more people and you realize all of this is just procrastination um and then in essence i put in uh, an hour of writing time every day every morning before i started work and, and and just kind of plowed through every day putting um you know, words on page um, and, and getting through it. So it was done paragraph at a time. 
Um, but yeah, it, it took time. James, you are a founder, you're an author, you're an advocate talking about mental health, and you've got a book. As I said, you're an author, you've got a book out um called mental health at work how are you yeah i'm good thanks i'm still getting used to being called an author and calling myself an author actually so it's uh yeah it's cool to hear it from from you well look published by penguin so definitely i mean it's not even this isn't self-published this is this is proper published this is this is this is um i i think i think you need to get over that because there's no there's no getting away from it now no no i'm getting there <laughs> um where do you introduce yourself then just out of interest is it is it now mainly <laughs> book orientated or is it still the business obviously uh, which is i assume your everyday kind of existence? i mean that that is such a good question that is honestly so on point i think i'm uh yeah i'm very much going through a bit of a um a bit of a shift really i suppose in in how i talk about myself how i how i identify i suppose um yeah I've always for the last five years it's just been founder of Sanctus founder of Sanctus that's been my that's been my go-to and then now Mm -hmm. I've written a book and I've always talked about mental health I've always written I've had a newsletter for five years that's quite well subscribed to that I've written sort of fortnightly probably on average always been quite outspoken on LinkedIn, done a lot of public speaking, but that's kind of always been in the background and building a business was in the foreground. And then now I think there's a switch happening where the, you know, being a founder and a business builder is probably a bit more in the background and then being more of more of a public facing person is in the foreground. So yeah, very timely question for me. Look, I'll, I'll agree with you. I'm I'm someone who's got a lot of bookshelves. I kind of think that books are wallpaper. Um, my only problem is that when I'm on a holiday, I tend to find that I'll read like four pages and fall asleep because, you know, you're just kind of like recharging. Like I was away this weekend um, sitting in a field under a tree and literally didn't get through the first page of a book before I'd passed out. Oh, wow. I mean, I, I don't know if I'm that bad, Dave. That's Maybe you need to you you need to download this app if that's the case because <laughs> there is a problem there. Catching you can't up. even get to the end of page one. No, but I, I I tend to devour books on on holiday and get through them. Certainly, if I'm kind of on a beach, like you know, I, I'd love going to a country where it's a little bit too hot in the middle of the day to actually do anything. So you go for a swim in the morning, then you kind of read lazily under a tree in the afternoon, and then you uh, and then you find yourself kind of back in the water in the evening. Mm. That's that's kind of that's peak beach holiday. Uh, oh. with a with a really good book oh beautiful because i'm out in the sunshine today and obviously it's um yeah i mean i could do with a nice pool and a nice book this is like this is that type of weather isn't it that's what um, we need on the office roof a pool yeah oh yeah that'd be that'd be great who do i speak to <laughs> um i could get that sorted out yeah I'll, i'm happy let's let's do that uh look obviously we, we kind of gave a, a couple of recommendations of business books but kind of going fiction non-fiction anything what what would be your recommendation if you had to pick out a book for the summer for someone oh okay so i have two um because i couldn't whittle it down to one i'm sorry um so my like all-time favorite is anything by dolly alderton but um her book um everything i know about love is amazing it's just if you've lived in london or you maybe even work in london or you just like kind of cheesy corny type stories um yeah it's brilliant so i'd 100 recommend that it's a nice easy read Mm -hmm. and then on the other side um i'm i'm sort of into like you know the kind of self-help um type books so anything like vex king um i think he's great um yeah those be my sort of two recommendations they're two quite sort of different books but yeah definitely what mood you're in but um yeah i'd say for the summer i'd probably go for um for jolly alderton I'm more likely to go with your first suggestion than this. I don't, I'm not a fan of self-help books. Sorry. Oh, Sorry. You, you no. don't need self-help, Amber. No, um, I know, but they're just so interesting. <laughs> like, I just love that sort of stuff. It's so interesting to me. Okay. Uh, my one recommendation to anyone, especially over the summer, Captain Crowley's Mandolin. Brilliant book. Oh, okay. Brilliant hmm. book. Okay, I'll have to check that. I've not heard of that. that sounds, You've okay. not heard of Captain Crowley's Mandolin? No. No, I, I haven't. I haven't. Oh, I had a moment no. right there where I was like, have I? No, no, I definitely haven't. Oh, it's a brilliant book. It's, uh, 
Avoid the film adaptation. Definitely avoid the film adaptation before you read the book. Maybe you can watch the film after you've read the book, but the film will probably ruin the images of the characters. Uh, but yeah, it's a kind of a, a romantic war drama Ooh. set in Kefalonia in Greece in the Second World War. It's, it's perfect for summer. Very interesting. Okay. Right. Well, look, I will leave you to get back downstairs, even though you're probably loving the sunshine up on the roof. But Amber, thanks for, for joining me. And to everyone else, enjoy Book Lovers Day and maybe have a download of Sleepwave and see if it helps you wake up in the mornings as they get darker. It's all right. Cheers, Dave. <laughs> <laughs>